morning, Rachel. Good morning. How are you? It's an awesome Friday. <laughs> Do you have plans for the weekend? Uh, relaxing before I'm going to Armenia next week. So. Oh wow, that's cool. Yeah, we have a site in Armenia. It's going to be a long trip. Nice. How about you? Um, I'm going to Vegas this weekend, but it's a not exciting trip. It's just for fun. Hmm. Hey guys, it's Doug. Hey Doug. Hello. Hi, it's Lee. Hello. Hi. Oh. Hi, Sarah. You're hard to hear. Is that uh, still hard to hear? No, that's better. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Let's bring up the notes. Do we have any? 323. Um, let's, uh, while we wait for people to come, um, I'm just, I'll just add to the attendees. Um, Doug, I see you're here. Is Doug here? Yeah, I'm here. Just quiet. Right. Rachel. Yeah. Louis. Yep. I think you've we've met before, but maybe you can introduce yourself and where you're from. Yeah, I'm from Huawei. You cut out for just a sec. I don't know if you did for everybody. Yeah, I'm from Huawei. All right, I don't know how to spell that. Um, and then Mark. H-U-A-W-E-I. H-U-A-W-E-I, ah, yes. Um, Mark? Yeah. Here. And you're from? VMware. VMware, yes. I am slowly remembering, and then Austin? Good morning. Good morning. And Austin, you're from? Serverless Inc. Serverless Inc. And Mark Fisher. Hello. Mr. Pivotal. <laughs> Fisher from Pivotal. Great. Did I get everybody? I think so. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining me um, and joining us in this um, uh, epic scoping exercise. Um, I, what I did it this morning is pull out the two, the consumer and the producer, which I think are the bits that are um, pretty clear in um, the usage scenarios, which um, we went over in detail on Monday and Tuesday. And um, I, the only things, whoops, files changed, which doesn't have my latest commit. Sorry, hold on a sec. Um, but what I was proposing to do is to have a, um, uh, to make sure we're aligned on those. And, um, and then those have those be a separate pull request and then dive into the discussion of um, uh, I don't know why this is not, I can fix it up later. But what I attempted to do this morning, but is not in this pull request is um, to just have this be um, the consumer and the producer, and then separately talk about the framework and the middleware and see if we can get further on that 
and, um, and then do that as a separate PR. So at worst case, we'll have the consumer and the producer established, and then we can talk about the other things. Does that make sense? Yeah, that sounds good. So Sarah, one of the, um, one of the concerns I have is that I've, I've heard from Clemens that Microsoft is not in favor of pulling it out, mainly because they, they believe that removing the middleware stuff uh, basically ignores their requirements. And so I'm wondering whether it would be useful to, rather than looking to split at this time, if we couldn't focus on seeing if we could come up with concrete textual changes to the current PR that would get everybody to the point where they say, yes, it's good enough and we can move forward. Um, let's talk about that. Um, so I am, I've heard that we want cloud events to be used in the, um, like for a, a webhook where an application talks directly to like a, um, a consumer talks directly to a producer with no middleware. Okay. And that, that's why I, I thought we could do this in direct, it, 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 um, directly. And I think that the number one and two says that. And so that, that was my thinking, but we, I'm, I'm happy. I know that we also have stakeholders and Google is one of them where middleware is important. So I'm fine with that um, approach. I just wanted to clarify that we are also meeting the needs of stakeholders who don't have middleware. Yeah, I, I, I don't think anybody would question that. I would just rather, it just seemed like we were, I, I got the feeling based upon the uh, many discussions we've had this week that we were fairly close to agreement on Clemens PR and that if we could just get some minor wording changes, we may be able to get over that, that threshold of saying, yes, it's good enough and we can move on. All right, so let's talk about it. So I think they, um, I thought we were very close on Clemens PR, but then I was surprised at the implication that this would require topics in the definition of the event. And um, we had talked about in the past that there were several architectures which had a higher level of abstraction on top of topics for, um, you know, Google has trigger specifications where you can specify a filter and I think that uh, Nucleo also has um, a similar um, architecture. So my interpretation of all the text that we're putting in there is not to force us to define what's in the spec at this time. They are simply there to explain some of the, some of the thoughts that have been running through our heads in terms of what of the use cases we'd like to try to support. I don't believe there's anything in there that mandates we will have a topic. I think that's a discussion for later when someone actually proposes, we add a, a attribute called topic. So um, I just wanna, so this is the clarification that I wanna make in this, in this document. Um, why don't I share my screen so you can see which I wish I meant to be doing. Yeah, if you can show us the exact line of text you think mandates that we're gonna be adding a topic, I think that'd be useful. Yeah, I, I think, think that I don't there's, think that was the intent. I don't think it's, it, I think it's just not clear. Um, so I'll share my screen. Um, I think that, that um, so basically there's the middleware routes events from producers to consumers or onwards to other middleware applications might delegate certain tasks um, from consumers requirements to the middleware. And then it says that to satisfy these needs, whoops, sorry, the middleware is interested in these metadata discriminators. Um, so I think that um, what Clemens has argued in the past when we talked about triggers was that those don't need to be in the event because those discriminators could be only addressed in the middleware, not in the event. So I'd, rather, this, not, I'd rather not focus on what he said. Okay, I'd rather I'm focus saying on what that it is, a, it is a reasonable assumption that these classifications, right, could be addressed by the middleware without being in the event. The, um, the, um, that there would be, um, um, 
would it help if it said, if there was a, a word or two in the beginning a line, like on 140, that said middleware will, will be interested in things like, and then the list, not it, I, implying that it's more like a, a list of examples as opposed to something close to normative. So I think it's that um, what, what I'm, I'm trying to understand is how, and maybe there are some people on the call who have um, topic-based systems who could speak to um, how, I, I'm, I'm trying to understand how this description got us to we need topics. And so I feel like there are, I, I, and what I'm trying to address is this continued of confusion. I'd like to be able to point to something in this description that says um, these are not messages. Like if somebody says, why aren't we calling this cloud messages? I'd like to be able to point to a section and that says, this is why they're not messages. Hey Sarah, um, I don't think anything in here actually denotes. So this was based off poll 117, is that correct? Yeah. Um, I think the, the source of confusion maybe that happened yesterday was the poll request that um, you, Rachel, Klaus um, had a fair amount of pushback on was actually 95. Um, this pull request hasn't changed from the standpoint of defining like a producer, a consumer, middleware framework. Um, if you search for the word topic, I'm relatively certain it's nowhere in, in this. No, it is not part. in here. That's, that's what, and that's why I just wanted to say there's to me a little bit of a decoupling here from design, defining kind of the high level persona or roles, right, that we talked about versus do these actually force us into having, you know, topic be one of the required metadata fields on the event envelope. That to me was kind of the, there was a little bit of uh, ambiguity as to whether or not, well, we were talking about 95 or 117. So I'm talking about, um, I thought that on Monday and Tuesday we were getting to conversion and then um, there were a whole bunch of questions that I didn't anticipate. So, um, so I think that, you know, if folks feel that, I mean, it, these metadata discriminators are really purely about the event itself as given by the examples. Um, and then the, the wording was changed here so that it, it's clear that um, the, um, the producer, I believe this is clear that the producer doesn't, it doesn't imply that there must be middleware. The producer decides if it's going to send something to middleware, right? Yeah, absolutely right. Like the, ultimately to me, the producer doesn't define where the message is going, right? This is not a point to point system. This is purely a, like a, an, an immutable point in time observation was taken of a thing, right? And I'm gonna make people aware of it, make others aware of it. Right. And that, that's so, and that I think kind of segues into the idea, which is when we had the idea of, so I, again, like I don't wanna confuse 95 with 117 or now what is 122, but the idea then was there was some confusion around the word source. And I think we should scope that source versus topic was brought up. Um, but again, I think that is a totally separate piece of the conversation related to poll 95. I think 117 really just defines the high level act, not even actors, high level kind of personas. Yeah, I would agree. And Sarah, I think it might be useful to focus on 117 instead of 122. Sure, this is, <laughs> is now identical. So I will go over here if you, if that. Yeah, just, just to make well, sure just, we're looking at these. I, think. I don't personally have any, <laughs> like one way or the other, it doesn't matter to me if we, okay. um, if it's 122 or 117. I think okay. at the end of the day, like if we settle on a, you know, the, the correct set of words <laughs> that we believe convey the, the personas, it means very little to me, which, which pull request got merged. No, I, I, I wasn't focused on the number. It was more, I wanted to, I wanted to look at what, what Clemens was advocating for, right, as opposed to something that changed afterwards, which not everybody's had a chance to review yet. 
So uh, the thing that we're looking at right now, which is 117 and the conversation about middleware, I have concerns about because it seems like there's not alignment about whether or not middleware changes the event. So Sarah, can you hide all the comments? Just so it's easier to look at just the text itself and we could ignore the comments for right oh, now. Oh, here, I sorry, I didn't see that checkbox. Yeah. So, so Rachel? Well, which, well, wait a sec. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead, Mark. So there, there is a comment from Clemens that says, none of the activities change the events semantically so that is that in the text here it's a it's in a comment so i think uh, that's that's 129 so i think that's the challenge is that i think they that we want the confusions right and the questions to be addressed in this text right so so let's let's focus on rachel what what is what is the bit of text in here that led you to believe that something incorrect could happen within middleware um, it wasn't so at the top of number three, so like on line 121. Sarah, do you want to go to line 21? Yeah. Middleware routes events, uh, middleware routes events from producers to consumers or onward to other middleware. So that leaves open, like, is it able to change it? Is it not able to change it? So I asked the question. I just made the suggestion, like, without changing the event, that it's not a semantic change um, because it's like, it's not clarified in that sentence. Uh, and then that led to a long discussion where, like, I was just waiting to hear the answer. Like, if it's rejected or if it's accepted, I'll have a different response. And there was not a conclusion. So I would, I would like to just specify right there on line 122, either with or without changing the middleware. Okay. So if we can agree on what that is. Sarah, I started, started to trash you on this, but could, could you turn on the comments sure. real quick and, and then go back to 129? I think this might actually be in the spec, or sorry, in the language that Clemens drafted on line 131. He put in here, transformation that changes the event structure like mapping from a proprietary format to cloud events while preserving the identity and semantic integrity of the event. And then can we, can we like decide whether or not middleware is changing the event? Right, so that says that it, the middleware can do that. It doesn't say that the middleware won't do the other thing. So I think, it, so, okay, maybe this is my point of view, but it seems to me when we start getting into saying what can and can't happen in middleware and stuff like that, it's sort of out of scope for us, right? We're defining an event format. What happens before and after the event is sort of manifested to be compliant with our spec is sort of out of scope for us. So I'm not really sure it's appropriate for us to say what middleware does or does not do. I well, I think I that the definition, so this is the, um, I think it's really important to get this right because this has been the confusion of discussions. I, I believe the intent of this pull request is that if middleware were to change the semantics of the event, it then becomes a producer. It is no longer middleware as we're agreeing on the terms here. But I, like, okay. So, so uh, my, my point was just that I like I'm okay with uh, like I want us to get alignment like the goal of this document for me is that we should understand each other's use cases and we should agree on what the terms mean and so I'm just trying to get to like I just want to know what we mean when we say middle way not trying to I'm not trying to be prescriptive I want to understand what people mean and it feels like that's not um, like we, we haven't aligned there yet. I, this is going to sound more blunt than I intended, but I don't think it matters. Um, to be perfectly honest. Um, I, we have had many, many conversations where people... Only, wait, wait, let, me, let me finish. I, I don't think it matters because ultimately someone is going to, produce, to be producing an event. I don't care who that is. As long as the person producing the event pr puts the right information in the right spot, I don't think it makes difference whether they think of themselves as a producer, a middleware, a framework, or anything else. As long as they put the right data in the right spot, they can think of themselves any way they want. I think, so I think um, that there, there are implications of this that, like, it, it's not, it's not just wordsmithing, like, a, like, Clemens' last comment is, and this is why source is the wrong attribute. So, like, I think a lot of people are reading more into this like people like it's it's like aligning worldviews and then from that we can write a spec 
I would actually echo that sentiment as well, right? Like when you open the door to say, I, as, you know, quote unquote middleware can say, I'm going to change parameters on the event. It is now the job of the consumer to detangle, like, well, was this just the routing of the event versus the actual initial emission of the event, right? I think you open the door for a lot of ambiguity Middleware is purely observational, as I think what we're going for in this case. And I think that's what you're advocating for, Sarah, and uh, exactly. as well, which is the idea that if you're going to change something about an event in any capacity, right, like you have ultimately not, you're not middleware anymore, right? And that's what we're trying to define. Middleware is specifically the, like a Kafka broker or a mesh network that is literally just forwarding packets, right? Those are the sorts of things that we're saying, like if I don't some, even change, go so far as to change source, right? The source of the event was a sensor, but I'm an API gateway. So there's, the, there's some ambiguity there as to, okay, now do I change the source on the event to say that it's coming from me versus it's coming from, you know, the original sensor. That was, I think, Clemens intent with that, I think ultimately what this says is a producer creates the event middleware, forwards it in some capacity or fans it out in some capacity. There is observation and routing. There is no change outside of format changes, right? Like moving between message pack versus JSON. Yeah, that's what I would have expected. And then that's not what seems to be happening in the conversation. So like, I think we should just like we need to we need to like decide on that one and then i think this like that like that's my main concern with this uh with the usage scenarios and after after we like have agreement there i like i think it's probably good to go for me i think uh clemens actually in one of his comments indicated that the uh event context metadata would be immutable so i mean that that implies that middleware doesn't change the uh the event context but then he says in the comments for like in these comments right here that he does like he does imagine the middleware changing changing things and making a semantic change doesn't he well maybe we can um move forward with like the alignment in the rooms because i think there are other folks who have similar systems to microsoft who maybe are represented here who could yeah, speak for that is. Um, I'll speak up. Uh, you know, we have a product called the Event Gateway, uh, which seeks to be a middleware solution for cloud events. And, <clears throat> you know, at, at this time, you know, I, I, I do think we have a handful of features that we'd like to implement that we've heard from users that, um, that do transformations on the event structure, but again, don't change the semantic integrity of the event. And I think that that's, that's a pretty good rule that, that we personally like um, to, be able to, to be able to do that. I'm, I, mean, I am pretty hesitant to get super prescriptive about this actually at this time because it is so early. Um, so that's something I'm, I'm, I'm currently feeling as I listen to these conversations. But I, I do you, we definitely do want to do some type of transformative features, but again, not to change the semantic integrity of the event, but just to add on potentially other properties um, or, or change formats. Yeah, and to, to sort of address your, your comment, Steve, if, if I think it was Steve, or is it Stanley? I'm sorry, somebody. <laughs> um, if, if a middleware is going to be making some changes to the event. And then there's the whole question of, well, is, does it now become the source or not? I think the way that decision would manifest itself would be to propose a change to the specification itself relative to the attributes that we have, right? Because if someone says, well, I need to have additional information beyond the original source ID or whatever they're, they're talking about, right? Then they're going to advocate for potentially a new attribute to be added. And they're going to have to make a case for, for why that needs to get added. And I think that's the best way to resolve these kind of discussions is by saying, okay, how would we resolve your particular use case? Can you do it with the existing stuff? Do we need to add something or change something? I'm not sure, as, as Collins was saying, um, I'm sorry, as Austin was saying, is being that prescriptive 
just in defining the scenarios that you know guided our thought process i don't think is necessarily as productive as, as it as people some people think it is that sounds really reasonable to me um would it be useful if we captured middleware scenarios separately like if we just like um moved on with this with this pr and then like maybe even pulled out the middleware and and just like collected the middleware requirements elsewhere I, i'm just doing my best to channel clevens here um they would object to a pr that pulls out middleware because that they, they view that as a significant portion of, of their requirements yeah i don't want to say i don't want to say that like we shouldn't capture middleware requirements just that like <clears throat> the, there are more middle more middleware requirements that aren't being included here well um, sure. let's just pause on that for a sec i want to address the uh, question that doug raised um which was why you know why is this important and what I want to call back to is the many discussions of what is source, right? Like wh where, if we can agree that the middleware, that, that like whatever the source, except for like format and encoding, the sources, um, meta, whatever context it provides is immutable, then I think that that does move the conversation forward. I think there is some need to say, if we say that middleware could do anything, then we start to have a third actor in the event that, um, right, like- I completely agree with this line of thought, right? Like you've, you've added Puppet Master or something, right? Like I'm, I'm now going to look at events and decide whether or not they need to be mangled. Um, if anything, you can relegate the scope of what middleware is allowed to change to our extensions, right? the actual envelope as it was initially created is immutable and but we allow for extension right and and to go so far as to the data payload is also immutable right uh extensions however right this this um basically generic hash map that we've allowed is the only thing middleware is allowed to touch I think that's exactly all. what what so, clement stated in his comments I mean, that's a fair point. I'm thinking this is sort of the, the compromise I'm t attempting to, to propose between the two, right? Which is, you know, there, there has to be some notion of, you know, an event was produced, middleware really can't reach in and mangle it, except to add context that potentially indicates to someone that, you know, it, an event hopped along a route to get to where it's going. I'd like to... Uh make a comment on this, which is if we read number one and at the bottom it talks about a use of middleware where a weather station is a producer but the intermediate gateway is actually creating, is the producer of the cloud event. And this is, this is a use case that uh, we're doing inside of our project dispatch where we are taking foreign events and turning them into cloud events. Same. We're going to, we're going to be doing that as well. Right. And, and, so, and, and, and so, so there is a reference here where it says that the inter, this intermediate gateway plays a middleware role C3. If that's the intent of, what Clemens was talking about, then that is a very valid use case for what both uh, Austin and I have inside of the event gateways that, that, that we have. So, so I, I think that we're, oh, sorry, ahead. go ahead. I'm oh, no, sorry, no. I defer to you. Um, so the question I have is if, um, like, does that mean that we're saying middleware can choose to be a producer or a transport? I would actually argue that that sentence is incorrect in, in part one. I think if you are constructing the event, you are the effective producer on behalf of, right, the context in which an event took place. This was a similar question um i was thinking of it from an iot perspective right like where i have access to like 12 bits i can you know raise or lower and ultimately like a and a gateway is going to say oh like this bit was lowered means low battery right 
um, you're producing the event in the, on the context or on behalf of, right, like the actual sensor or the actual weather station or something along those lines. To me, I think this paragraph should be rewritten based on the discussions we had this week. Well, I, again, you know, we're, we're trying to put words into Clemens' mouth in terms of what he meant here. Uh, but I, if, if he was deriving a lot of meaning within that middleware role based on uh, this uh, transformation uh, between that original producer that may not produce cloud events and then the gateway producing the cloud event, that might be part of the confusion here. Sure. I even think within the paragraph, it's inconsistent, right? Like you're saying, he actually says the gateway publishes the event. Well, it is. It, I think it's a nuance of it produces an event, maybe not a cloud event. I think what you're, what I'm hearing then is that the weather station has the proprietary, right? Like event that contains data indicating weather conditions every five minutes and the cloud event is what's coming from the gateway. Is that what you're arguing or am I misunderstanding? Let me try a different, a, a different one, which is I, I can hook up to SQS and wait for events coming in through SQS. And then I can transform that into a cloud event to SQS. They are producing an event. Um, I'm going to chime in real quick uh, with one other note that I don't think we've covered from the perspective of middleware. Uh, you know, one thing I'm worried about with us being so prescriptive here in this language is we're going to preclude our ability to be able to listen to the market. Um, and now the way our middleware implementation is going to work is that users are configuring everything. So, so nothing is going to happen by surprise. They're going to be able to configure exactly how events are treated and converted or if they're transformed within our gateway. We want to make sure that we, we do give them some level of flexibility there um, because we also, because we want to enable our system to kind of listen to users uh, and be able to accommodate a lot of functionality. Um, so all this stuff, anything that happens within the middleware, you know, we, we'd like to, do a lot of experimentation in that area. And again, it's going to be configurable completely by the user. So nothing will be, will be happening by surprise. Um, I do worry as we kind of dig in uh, to this language and try and get more and more precise um, that it's going to stray from what I think some of the middleware implementations will, uh, will actually look like. Is there, is there a way to say that? Because I feel like that's a very interesting point. And if I were reading this document later, I wouldn't know that I wouldn't I wouldn't know that we're trying to be um, I, I would read it as ambiguous rather than purposely ambiguous that's a fair point too Austin can I ask a kind of dumb question just given my context um, mm -hmm. is your intent to supply sort of like ETL ish type workloads like saying like we will consume events transform them or perform aggregations or projections and then potentially persist them somewhere else um, that is something that we're considering. Uh, we're, uh, to be honest, we're considering a lot of things within the middleware. Sure. And it is I going mean, to blur. It is going to blur the lines between a lot of the things we're talking about here. I would actually argue you take on all three personas in that respect. Like, if I wanted to use you to simply route from A to B without touching the event, you would support that, I assume, immediately. And in that mm -hmm. case, you're purely middleware. In the yep. case where you're consuming events, you know altering them significantly or ins insignificantly and then producing new events, you're effectively, you know, consumer transport and producer, right? Where transport in this particular instance is my, I use the wrong word, right? Um, you're transforming and potentially, you know, moving data. So, I mean, I, I think the three personas might hold if only that you are if you are willing to acknowledge that you are actually all three of them instead of just one of them. Yes, uh, absolutely.
I mean, I think it goes without saying that we're all wanting integrity within data integrity within all of these messages as we transform them or move them along the pipeline. But at the end of the day, you know, there, there will be changes made uh, depending on what the source is and what the destination is. Yeah, and I, I agree, and I, that, that's why I get very nervous when I hear people in, <laughs> I think that, uh, implying that that our spec is in some way going to say a person in role X must not do this to the event. So I think I what I don't think you can say that. So what I'm suggesting is that what we're doing is we're helping our conversations. We're saying if you're in role X, you cannot do that. Therefore, you have to describe yourself as role Y in order to have the conversation be more effective. So if we say that, so one approach is to say that the, in this weather station example, it decides whether it is the producer or, an, or middleware. And if it wants to construct required meta, metadata, then we refer to it as the producer. So maybe it wasn't clear. I don't think our spec can mandate what any implementation does aside from mandating what data goes where. Whether, and it, whether someone in one role chooses to manipulate an event in some way is out of scope for us. Um, I'm suggesting that we have a common language for describing the roles based on what they do. And anybody can do anything. And if they do a certain set of things, we describe them as a producer. If they do a certain set of other things, we describe them as middleware, and it will help us in our conversations. Right. I, it, uh, so what I'm hearing is you guys are in violent agreement, actually. <laughs> it's like what, what yeah. I would take away from this conversation. I think, Sarah, you're exactly right to say we're not going to be prescriptive about what you can and can't do. We're simply saying if you do these things, you are in this role. Yes. And to your point, Doug, I think that assuages your concern about getting too prescriptive about specifics. Like we're, we're not saying you can or can't do things. We're simply saying if you do X, you are a producer. If you do X and Y, you are a consumer or something along those lines, right? Yeah, I don't necessarily disagree with what you're saying, except based upon the last two to three weeks of going round and round and round, I'm not sure I would agree with the claim that it's helping us focus, <laughs> right? And that's why I would rather put this behind us one way or the other and focus on people advocating for or against attributes appearing in the spec because in the end, that's all that matters. But doesn't this inform what attributes belong in the spec? No. In say, well, let me put yes and no. Doesn't this seem entirely unrelated to you? So I think that so, we need so, to share. Let, 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 me, let me finish. The reason sure. I, I say no is because everybody is going to have their own point of view in terms of what's important and what's not. And everybody will come to the table with their own perspective. And when you argue for or against a particular change in the specification, you will present your point of view relative to that particular change. And that's all that really matters, right? Whether you choose to agree with all this text in PR 117 is, is almost irrelevant because ultimately we're gonna to have to repeat the exact same discussions when we talk about the attributes because you're gonna to have to justify your use case for it. We could also adjust this language if needed. And we've already said that this language isn't normative. Um, what, what I'm trying to do is to move us forward in when we say middleware, what do we mean? When we say producer, what do we mean? So that because we've, we've had this, we've had many times we've had the API gateway conversation and many times, and we've had new people come on board and have the same conversation again, where generally I think there is agreement that there is a, the, the common, the most common use case like is a dumb gateway that just says, I'm doing format transformations and I'm passing one thing to another. And that's, um, that has a, one set of concerns, which are, are a lot of concerns. Like there's all these transport questions and encoding questions that we've deferred that we, we will get into that having an actor that doesn't actually change the meaning of the event is a useful concept in our conversations. And so that's kind of what I'm trying to get at is that when somebody says, 
I'm middleware that we know what concerns we're bucketing in there, or we can say, we call that, you're in the producer role. Great, now tell us all your concerns. And so that we have that shared language for like, because we have different architectures. I, th I think this is uh, a helpful exercise. Uh, getting uh, getting uh, aligned on a shared language is, it, it sounds like a small thing, but it is, it is so important to enhance collaboration. Um, and I think that what we have here is, is pretty good. It's also going to help newcomers come and understand this better and navigate the ambiguous world of events. Um, so I think there's definitely value created here. At the same time, I'm certainly hearing a lot of folks uh, get more and more antsy to just go back to the attributes discussion uh, and focus on that. Is there any way that we could address any other comments regarding this PR and, and seek to um, seek to potentially close it by the end of this this conversation? Yeah, I think one thing that would be really great, like one thing that's been really clarifying for me in this conversation is that we see middleware as being able to assume any of the three roles. It could be flat middleware, producer or consumer. And if we could include that, I think that would be very clarifying. Like it could be one sentence in section three at the top of section three, um, or maybe it just goes, at the top or the bottom. I don't know. It could go in several places, but that's an important point. I'd agree with that as well, actually. That is a nice piece of clarity. I like that. Is there, um, did we decide on how we were going to change 117 since Clemens is not open to changing this anymore? Are we going to fork it and hope he accepts the PR or what are we going to do? I, think I, I, I can I can push I, I can push commits to his PR. That's not an issue. Um, oh. it, I just need to know what textual changes that we're proposing. Um, would you like me to send a sentence? I would prefer comments directly made to the PR that says change this sentence to this sentence, the exact wording. All right. I just want to add a sentence, but I will put it in the PR. Okay. Um, so no. do you want to put it at the bottom or this is a, I think we also decided that there would be, um, a change to the last paragraph of point one, given that we are, if something is producing an event on behalf of the original producer, we're considering them to be a producer. And I think that's a comment that Mark left in the chat as well. I can, I can work on that comment if you'd like. That would be great. Because I think that would be very helpful in our conversations. Because basically, I believe me, I am antsy to get to the actual specification. I just want to make sure that when we're talking about attributes, we have this common language. Um, so are you, uh, Rachel, and I don't know who was just speaking, are you drafting? I'm writing a sentence that I'm going to just add as a comment and that Doug can decide if he wants to include. Yeah, I mean, with only what, 18 minutes left on the call, I, I'd prefer that we get to the point where by, what would be the deadline, you know, Tuesday morning or whenever it is, Monday night, that people have made the exact textual changes they'd like to see in the spec, and then I can quickly run it by you know, Microsoft to see if they have any objection to it going to their PR, because technically it is their PR. And if not, we can get it add it and, in and vote on this thing really quickly. I know it would be great if Microsoft had somebody else from Clement's team who could join the discussion in case there are questions on Thursday. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on that. And I believe they will have somebody there, yes. Super. Um, and then, okay, so let's assume that that's gonna happen. And thank you, Rachel. And did you make a note of who else was gonna do? Oh, that's Stan, sorry. Stan, thank you. Um, I wanna, um, there was a question that was raised in yesterday's conversation that wasn't answered, which is um, why do we have a separate framework section when we've already said that um, there are, there was like, I think it was Kathy who was saying that in the producer, there were multiple roles, right? There's the plat serverless platform or, you know, there's a, the platform, the application developer, and those were collapsed into one role. And so there was the open question of why do we have this separate frameworks role? And so um, Clemens uh, gave a shout out to you, Austin, 
And so I'm curious whether framework is different from middleware in terms of its needs. Well, it depends on your definition of framework, of course. Uh, you know, we have a, a framework that's a developer tool for provisioning all the configuration, uh, all the infrastructure, wiring these things up so that they work together. Um, and that's, that's what our definition of framework is. And that's certainly, that's certainly a, different, a different role than the middleware. Um, and it's a bit of an ambiguous role too. It could be, it could be a lot of things. And let me look at this language again. So, so like we have middle, we have frameworks too, right? So we have mm -hmm. um, on the Firebase side, like we have a SDK that does, um, that takes the event and like, you know, decorates it with all sorts of things and, and um, has a bunch of UI and, and developer tools around it. And um, I was originally sort of bucketing that in the needs of the consumer, Right, the consumer may, may have that type of developer API framework or the producer might have it, right? And so I wonder whether the, it would clarify it to members of the working group if, the, if whatever the framework needs are, are the consumer needs. Or if it clarifies it to have it separate, that's fine too. I just wanted to address that point that we didn't have time to discuss yesterday. So the framework needs are the consumer needs. Um, they're either consumer or producer. Like they, they fit into the other roles. I think our, in our case, they're consumer needs, right? Because we have a consumer framework. Um, and I don't know whether your frameworks are producer or consumer framework, but I, I, it feels, feels like they might fall into one of the other three roles. Okay, are you, are you suggesting that we get rid of we get rid of this uh, persona? Um, I'm suggesting that it might be, I think that it's redundant with the other three. And I'd like your feedback on that. Hmm. Is it redundant? Um, I don't, uh, I'm not entirely sure at the moment, to be honest. Uh, I have to think more about it and read through that language again. Um, so, um, and if in doubt, I, I would like to capture your use cases more. So like, I, like if it does, if it feels like they're different, it would be great to like leave them in and provide more detail about what they are. Yeah. And just to, to tell you my perspective on this, it, it seems that this, um, the, the sort of this metadata commonality is really detailed in, you know, there was a, some, this, in this meditated discriminator up here for like aggregation. So Kathy was pretty vocal about this need to, for classification, right? Which, um, and I think that many of our systems need, um, which led to that pretty precise description, which I think, um, I just like to aggregate the same concerns in one piece of area of text, if appropriate. Uh, you know, regarding the framework, um, I'm not sure at the moment. I, I think it, there is a case for it being separate. In the interest of moving forward, though, I, I suggest that we perhaps just leave it in and, and address it in a follow-on PR. Does anybody else who's a middleware framework developer on the call or? Uh, um, can you hear me? So, mm -hmm. um, one aspect that might be important for the spec, or I think it is important, is the interoperability. So, uh, especially for the frameworks, uh, Austin, I think, develops. So, um, they, they need to be able to run in many different infrastructures and therefore may also rely a bit more on, the, on this aspect as the other roles. So, I could also imagine to, to have another PR later on. Um, maybe elaborating a bit more on this interoperability. I think that's that's the core goal of this, the whole specification. So far the description of the roles um, mainly describes typical eventing cases, but doesn't um, mention um, this interoperability, at least not explicitly. 
I think we have that in the design goals. Right yes, there? there it is. That's true. Yeah. It's it's just um. Yeah, I think that maybe I, there I, could be a scenario yeah. or something, uh, especially describing this. Uh, for example, an event leaving one. Uh, infrastructure organization and, and entering another one and, and how to deal with this. Yeah, I guess I had sort of put that in middleware camp, right? Because if we get it correct across the wire, then it seems that the framework should be able to do their jobs. And that a lot of, but you know, like I want to be open to, um, you know, what the right needs are of the folks involved. Yeah, it just uh, stepped over this aspect when thinking more and more about this this topic question, um, because in, in in that case you would need to to maintain a topic uh, hierarchy and a structure, and that's typically done inside one organization. But if events uh, um, leave one organization and are consumed by some other one, um, that gets more and more difficult. And, and and that way I stepped over this interoperability. Um, okay, could could we? Let's see. Is uh, I, I'm in favor of leaving kind of frameworks and language in as is, uh, just yeah. just on the, just so we can move forward. Is there um, was there anything else major that uh, that would, would would block this from from being uh, merged in that people are concerned about? Uh, I just added my comment on the clarification for point one I that was really it to reflect the conversation we had here otherwise no yeah I added the comment that I have also and I think it's good to go so um, great thank you um, and that is point one um, so I can't find it right now, but in our last 10 minutes, um, I, the question for the group is, um, in terms of how we describe our systems, are there, um, is this sufficient to clarify the scope of what we're doing? Um, I added another issue, because what, I, what I'm trying to do is when we get into discussion of the attributes, which I'm dying to do really, that we're, we can have really fruitful conversations about what we're doing and not get into, oh, you know, like confusion about what, what we're doing. We can, we, can, we can get into the how rather than the what, right? That's my goal. Like I'd like to have the attribute discussion to be how are we going to achieve something rather than um, with a shared understanding of what we're trying to do. Um, does anybody have any thoughts on whether we're there yet or what we would need to do to, to have really fruitful discussions on attributes? I think we're there. And I think beginning the conversation related to attributes will most certainly help us find deficiencies, right? Like I think we just have to be open to the idea that we will revisit the personas and clarify as necessary but from a baseline perspective i think this is a reasonable place to begin the conversation i think so too i think we've got our our roadmap which provided a lot of clarity uh, we have our design goals we have usage scenarios all of this should help increase our focus um, and this also just helps any any newcomers come in uh, contribute to the effort, really understand what's going on, which I also appreciate because that whole, that whole journey um, is important. So um, in closing that issue, do we feel that the, um, it sounds like we're saying that um, I think that it might be good to capture, somebody said at the beginning of this call, this is not a point to point system where 
specifying how to describe the events that are generated. And um, I don't know if that is actually, I mean, it's in the design goals, um, but the design goals also talk about that these have to be used within a system where there's a consumer and um, that maybe um, we, maybe just adding that somewhere about our scope might help. Doug, do you have a sense of where we might specify that? That I like, I want to be able to point to that if somebody says, like in the question, why aren't we calling this cloud messages? I, I tend to think that the, the current text that we have around scope and what we said in 117 relative to sort of our, our guiding usage scenarios, I, I think sufficiently explains what's going on. I don't think we need oh. to clarify anymore. So the cloud messages question came from me and it was in this discussion about topics. So um, I was just imagining this PR95 goes through, then you would have attributes for uh, topic, subject, I think um, event ID, timestamp. And if you replace the term event in these attribute names, then you would just have a message header, not, not nothing uh, specific for event. So that was my concern when I asked that question. Right, but so that's a question on PR95, yes, not necessarily exactly. just defining our scope. So I don't think we necessarily need to talk about that right here, right? Well, I, okay. I was fine with the goals here. I mean, here it states that it's events and everything. Yeah. All right, super. I just, I, so I think that um, what we're proposing in this breakout session is that the usage scenarios combined with the design goals with these additional changes would address the scope. With the, with the like, and maybe it might clarify things if we say in the roadmap that, um, wherever this is, sorry. Um, that um, we, that this is, that to refine, that, you know, like, I don't know. I think it's all, I don't think we have to change this. I don't know. If, if people feel like this is clear enough that people that will refine, I think it's, it's part of the spec and part of the point one milestone is to refine the spec so it works. I think we need to be explicit that the scope is not prescriptive about those use cases and they're only there as a example of how people might use cloud events. Should we put that at the top of um, the usage scenarios? Sure, we, we could put something like, these, these are meant as kind of general guidelines. I'll add, a, I'll add a comment there. Yeah, I think using them as like sort of guiding principles for the design, um, but not meant to be prescriptive as the only use of cloud events. So I would just ask with like three minutes left, if someone's gonna recommend a change to this PR, please suggest the exact text you wanna see. If it's more of a, I, I, don't, I don't, I just, just in general, if you, if there are other things you'd like to see added later, whether it's this doc or another one, I would strongly recommend a follow on pull request to, to make those changes. Yeah, I guess I should mention uh, my, my actual, my gut instinct is that this shouldn't be included in the spec at all. So <laughs> I was just trying to find a way to um, at least make that clear that, that it's not the intention of the spec to describe use cases for cloud events. Clement also said that this could be, um, he didn't feel like this needed to be in the spec either. So we could put this in the about section. Yeah, I think on the very first phone call, we talked about potentially a follow on PR that extracts this from the spec, but we wanted to get the text first and then figure out a placement later. <laughs> sure. I mean, it, it helps to get the same language in, within the working group, even if ultimately the, the work is thrown away, right? Or not included in the spec. So. Yeah, then becomes context, kind of like we have the status for a while and then we we refine it and now it's in the readme. And... So are we, are we getting close? Um, so I think that's the, the last point I wanted to make to Austin. Um, is there a time box for the final set of 
you know, comments to be included that Doug should bring into this specific or the, the pull request, right? Whether it's 117 or 122, let's decide right now. And then let's also. Today. Can today be the deadline? Yeah, I completely agree with that. I was going to yeah. say, like, yep. um, is like, what time is it now? Plus three hours is the time yeah. box. And then at that point, Doug will, you know, bring them in and, you know, that's it. Merge. How about how about like noon Doug's time? Doug, are you West Coast? One minute, yes. <laughs> Three p.m. Doug's time. Three p.m. Doug's time. <laughs> noon for everyone who's on a same time uh, zone. Oh. <laughs> I kind of like the idea of one minute, but jeez. <laughs> All right. If, I think if we we're... delete the PR altogether, it would only take one minute. Just to point. <laughs> All right. Uh, I thank think you, everyone. Sure alignment. Thank you, everybody. Oh, oh actually, yeah, one, one last well. one last note I wanted to make real quick. Um, I think we've done a great job bringing fantastic people together and outlining kind of what it is that we're doing right now. But I will say, I, I do worry that if we don't go directly into the attributes from here, I, I am detecting. I don't know, I'm getting a little concerned that we might lose people. So I want to I want to stress yeah. that we go right into the attributes after this because I'm just getting a lot of direct messages and emails. Um, so people Austin, are very anxious to do this. What I was going to suggest on the call is basically no discussion about this issue and just go straight to basically a vote. And then whatever PR is ready to go relative to attributes, that's the next on the agenda. So, um, so yes, and I really liked the suggestion that we do a collection of attributes together where they in, they're related to each other. And Sarah, I think that's a perfectly acceptable way to go, but the best way to have that discussion is file a PR with what you'd like to see. And as I said yesterday, I will do so. Okay, cool. That's all I've asked. I'm gonna be a nag about that one. <laughs> uh, in terms of process, I did add Klaus and Stan onto the attendees for today. Does someone want to take an action item to just write a couple of quick notes about what we discussed or direction? Doug, Sarah? I'm, I'm, right that up. Go I'm ahead. in meetings. Go for it. Oh, I can do it if you want. That's not a video. Thanks, Doug. Yep. Secretary, am I? Yes. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Just quick. Is there, assuming people have until what, 3 p.m. Eastern to get their new textual changes they want to see in there, is there any reason to meet again on Monday? Or are we basically assuming we're done? I think we're done with this PR. I do want to make a point that we have a lot of people in the group who are new. And so when we get to the attributes, one of the governance things that I proposed was that we give, if there is a minority voice, that we give them time to demonstrate the problem that they are raising rather than overruling their vote. And so I'm going to propose I made a governance proposal ages ago and I'm gonna propose just that one small change to governance because I think we wanna give newcomers a chance to demonstrate what their you know, use case is and we can time box it. Okay, just let you know, I think the governance is a very sets of rule that allows plenty of time for people to do that, but PR away if that's what you want. Yep. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thanks everyone. It's great. Thanks crowd. everyone. Bye. Have a good weekend. Yep, bye, bye guys. See you all weekend, bye. everyone.